hand for the mic. <coughs> Matt, what did they get going offensively after halftime there for, for the first 10, 12 minutes? It seemed yeah. like you had a hard time keeping out of the paint. Just what was they yeah. different? Anything they were doing real well or vice versa? No, they were just better at what they did. I thought they were great. Um, you know, in the second half, um, you know, we're very fortunate to have a lead at half with where they dominated us on the glass. And so to be in that position now, like, you know, you try to send the message of going forward, uh, you know, you got to be able to score the basketball, get your defense set. You know, we had some, some good cracks at it in the first three or four minutes of the <coughs> first half and nothing went our way and everything went their way. But uh, they didn't do anything differently. They just executed better. And, um, you know, obviously Trent Frazier got going early in the game and was very efficient the whole night. And then Io did a great job of distributing the ball and then, you know, got a couple kill shots there at the end to close the game out. And then Kofi Coburn was great. He was fabulous and uh, just how physically imposing he was and mm -hmm. dominated the glass. He almost had more rebounds than our whole team. So, you know, you've got to give those guys credit. Um, to lose one of their players that, you know, really hurt us at their place and then to have Georgie in foul trouble in the first half. Like, you know, we have a couple things that, you know, should help us, um, but you got to give them credit. You know, they, they had a couple guys out um, and uh, they played really well. And, um, you know, like I said, I, I felt like we were very fortunate to be in the position that we were with the way, you know, Illinois rebounded in the first half. And obviously they rebounded that way the whole game. Matt, why is two games against Illinois, why, why is it tough for your team to, to really generate consistent yeah, offense? Yeah, you know, we struggle from an offensive standpoint. We haven't struggled as much, you know, at home. Um, but some of those struggles tonight, I think, had a lot to do with Illinois defense. And um, if we can't establish some things in the low post and make those plays um, and get a little bit in transition, you know, now we can't get – it's hard for us to get Sasha involved. I thought they did a good job of staying with Sasha and not getting, um, you know, attempts from three. You know, he's been really key for us, especially at home, um, with the way he shot the basketball. But, you know, we just couldn't get anything going in the low post. And then from there, you know, we're, we're, we're searching for a, for a crew um, to play good, efficient offense. And, and we, we just haven't found that. Coach back here. Uh, can you yeah. talk about Trent Frazier's performance tonight? What was he doing so well? Right. Obviously making tough shots, but yeah. defensively, what were you telling your guys to just try to slow him down? Yeah, you know, they put you in a bind. You know, they have they have good guard play. Um, they have good decision makers. Um, they have good size dive into the rim. So you're trying your best to not let them get in the paint, but also handle the dive with a big guy, and then being able to still play. Um, on, on good closeouts and not letting him get going. He got one of them on our guy helping the dive to start the game. Then he got one in transition where he just dribbled into a three. So uh, just a good rhythm, three-point shooter, and uh, was very efficient. You know, you're not going to see guys take seven shots and get 21 points. You know, made his free throws and uh, was five for seven from three. So Trent's a good player, and he has the utmost respect of, of our staff. You know, even though he doesn't average as much, it wasn't one of those things for us. He's had a, I think, a 25 to 26 point game against us, maybe a little bit more. And so it's, he's a guy that we're staying with. Um, but like, you know, getting 21 points on seven shots is impressive. And we, you know, we were trying to stay with him. You've used, you've used the word fight a lot about your team this season. Right. Can you use the toughness Illinois obviously plays with as kind of a teaching right. point for your team at all? Well, sure. You know, I, you know, Illinois is tired of losing. Yeah. That's the way they played. You know, and, and there's a lot of guys in that locker room that, you know, have, have won games for us and been a part of winning teams. Right. But Illinois' fight is so much better than ours. You know, they, they have a great competitive spirit. They, they have a physical um, approach to them, obviously, with their two interior players. But they got athleticism to go along with that. But, I, you know, even with good athleticism or good quickness or good size, you still have to have a good fight to you. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I thought Illinois' fight, would, once again, was much better than ours. I guess to stay on that point, I mean, did you think yours was particularly lacking? The guys all came in here basically just talking about getting out tough and getting out tough. Yeah. Was it, do you feel like it's a case of Illinois just being at that high Well, they, they, when you get into that, and that's something that we've been able to do in our program, is that you can steal somebody's spirit. You know, I mean, you can be efficient on the offensive end, and then, you know, they're getting so many more possessions with their ability to rebound. And so it, it, it gets discouraging, and you can't allow it to get, let you get discouraged. You've got to be above it and have some resolve and fight. And a lot of times that's easier said than done. And, uh, you know, they wore us down tonight. 
there's no doubt about that. But we gotta gotta be able to respond. You, know, you gotta be able to learn from it and respond. Matt, we've talked a lot these last few weeks just about how hard it is to win on the road, and they came here and did that. Right. And holding serve each game. Uh, does that put some sort of added pressure on Friday night in regards to getting things turned around yeah. and well, getting another home yeah. I don't think it's pressure. You know, it's just a basketball game. You know, when it gets down to it. You know, go out and play and have fun. You know, play as hard as you can. And, like, when somebody comes and competes and plays harder than you, you know, now – I've never seen a competitive player or a competitive team when they get beat like this not respond. You know, if you don't respond from this, but also you can take in context, we didn't respond from the first loss at Illinois. So they, they beat us bad, and we didn't respond from that. So, that, you know, you, you do a lot of soul searching, you know, as a coach, you do a lot of soul searching as an individual player, and then collectively, you know, you've got to have that response through your actions. Like, you, you want an answer for me. The answer is Friday at 7 or whenever the hell the game. You know what I mean? Like, y'all can sit here and answer it all you want. You're like, well, he said this. That doesn't matter. It does not matter. It only matters what you do in your actions when you play the next game. We've also talked a lot this season about how sometimes they play through their ability to put the ball in the basket. Right. Did the start of the second half there where they get four offensive rebounds, can't put it in, did that kind of set a bad tone for things? No question. You know, you got to be able to, you know, you got to lead. You know, you got to be able to play and uh, be able to play through some things. But we had some nice looks at the basket to start the half, and then it just, you know, obviously they were making them and we were missing them. And that's a bad recipe. Anything else? Thank you. All right, thanks.